The eldest brother of Mexico's once powerful Ariano Felix drug cartel family was killed at a celebration by shooters dressed as clowns. Francisco Rafael Ariano Felix was killed while celebrating his 63rd birthday in Cabo San Lucas, a tourist town on the Baja California Peninsula. Today, we know that El Chino Antrax, the Sinaloa cartel's highest ranking hitman, was a clown assassin. His real name was Jose Rodrigo Arachiga Gamboa. Today, we will tell you about his dark beginnings and moreover, his tragic death. Gamboa wished to join the Mexican military as a pilot but couldn't pass the physical. He was regarded as unworthy of his country because of psoriasis, a skin ailment. He had to provide for his daughter and new wife. The lads he grew up playing with next door in Culiacan, Sinaloa were his childhood pals and they had a solution. Ismael El Mayo Zambada Garcia, their father, was a secretive leader of the largest drug cartel in the world. As described by his lawyer, Arachiga was initially given little missions to do. Over time, however, the duties increased and Arachiga finally became the merciless hitman known as Los Antrax of the Sinaloa cartel. In a federal court in San Diego, he was charged with trafficking methamphetamines, cocaine, and marijuana. He was wanted by the U.S. authorities. According to the charge, he planned with others to bring 500 grams of meth and 5 kilograms of cocaine into the United States. In the 2008-2009 conflict between the Sinaloa cartel, the Beltran Leyva Organization and the Ariano Felix Organization, he was involved in were directed some of the more heinous acts, such as strangling enemies from bridges and torturing them. Doesn't that sound heartless? Arichiga Gamboa was well known for his vibrant social media posts, in which he was allegedly seen posing with expensive accessories, jewels, and a fleet of fancy cars. His muscular physique, protein consumption, and fitness routine were regularly displayed on his Instagram page. He also appears in several narco corrido ballads, some portraying him as an elegant and fit man who enjoys driving sports vehicles, sailing, and sipping champagne. Even while his face was always hidden in his social media posts, he most often wore the skull-shaped diamond ring as a nod to Los Antrax and a way to identify himself. Despite his efforts to remain anonymous by blurring his face, U.S. authorities were able to find him. They discovered that he enjoyed traveling across the world. His ring also assisted them in identifying him when he arrived in the Netherlands from Mexico on December 31, 2013, and was arrested. He had undergone extensive plastic surgery, attempted to change his fingerprints, and was in possession of a fake passport when he was arrested. In May 2015, he pled guilty to conspiracy to bring cocaine and marijuana into the United States, confessing that he was a direct participant in Sinaloa cartel crimes and threats of violence. In December 2019, a judge sentenced him to seven years and three months in jail, considering time already spent despite the charges carrying a potential life term. According to court records, he was freed under supervision on March 3, 2020. He was reported missing from his home on May 6, 2020 by a parole officer. Gamboa has a history of going to great lengths to avoid being apprehended. Prosecutors have referred to him as one of the highest ranking Sinaloa cartel kinkpins ever prosecuted in the United States. Do you believe he was a real puzzle throughout it all? But a few months later, after he escaped from prison, and returned to Culican to live with his sister and her husband. On May 14, 2020, at night, Arichiga, his sister, and her husband were inside the house when a large group of men came in and began firing at him. Arichiga fired back, but soon ran out of ammo, and they were all held hostage. The bodies of Arichiga, his sister, and her husband were found in a black SUV, wrapped in cloth and with plastic bags over their heads. They had all been murdered by gunshot and tortured. The execution of a prominent Sinaloa cartel enforcer who had recently fled to Mexico from U.S. detention raises the question, who benefited from his death? 
Gamboa's brutal execution, which took place deep inside the criminal group's stronghold, raises the possibility that the hit was an internal decision by the group's top leaders. It's hard to say who benefited the most from his death. Considering Gamboa and Zambada's strong relationship, it's possible that the elderly Capo was less likely to have given the order to kill him. Gamboa may have collaborated with U.S. law enforcement as evidenced by the extremely short length of his sentence. And El Mayo may have assassinated him as a vengeance. The execution, however, probably benefited Guzman's son's lost Chapitos the most because it eliminated a possible key ally of Zambada.